Hello everyone, I'm Richard Byworth, the CEO of Diginex, and I'm extremely excited to be here today. Diginex is a full digital asset ecosystem with the broad vision of bringing digital assets to the world, institutions and individuals alike. This vision statement is as much about making these assets more accessible through education and innovative product offerings as it is about working with regulators to make this asset class more available to the world. Diginex was the first full digital asset ecosystem comprising a crypto exchange to be listed on NASDAQ, obviously up until the recent listing of Coinbase. This statement is important as it demonstrates a level of transparency and governance that this industry has been significantly lacking to date. Early adopting institutions needed to migrate, mitigate reputational risk and the Diginex ecosystem is unique in offering a regulatory focused platform with NASDAQ and SEC standards of governance. Before I dive deeper into the business, I want to just highlight the enormous growth that we've witnessed in trading volumes um, since we IPO'd last October. The exchange volumes have grown by more than 100x and continue to accelerate over recent weeks. These trading volumes directly translate into revenue, which we'll discuss later. Since the end of March, we have transitioned from effectively a pre-revenue company to one that is rapidly growing our top line. What I do want to highlight from this chart is that the core part of the business, being our crypto exchange, is growing rapidly despite the volatility and recent weakness in crypto prices. We are a picks and shovels play in what is one of the most exciting and disruptive industries we've seen in decades, which again, I'm going to explain later in the presentation. As I'm sure all of our listeners are aware, a watershed moment took place in, the, in April with the listing of Coinbase, one of the most established players in the industry. Coinbase was founded in 2012 versus our exchange Equos, which, which was launched in mid 2020. We are a fraction of their 58 billion market cap at just $245 million. Today, we do around 150 million to 250 million of trading volume a day versus Coinbase's Q1 2021 average of 3.72 billion. So we're approximately three to 4% of their volumes, yet we are less than 0.5% of their market cap. Since our listing, we've gone through some structural changes in our shareholder base after the six month lockup expired in March and the warrants were redeemed. We're now seeing an acceleration of interest, particularly from institutional investors, in both us as a company and the industry overall. Given we offer derivatives, our fees are lower, but as I showed, our growth is faster and accelerating. And as volumes continue to scale upwards, we're seeing an acceleration of institutions onboarding, seeking to interact with this li liquidity on a properly regulated and transparent platform. And the institutions are coming. Last year, Fidelity conducted a survey of institutional investors and assessed their interest in digital assets. The results show an industry primed for explosive growth, 80% believing digital assets are appealing to an amazing 22% that are already trading derivatives. And derivatives are extremely important instruments for the continued growth of the industry, and I will cover that more in a moment. Central banks' reaction to the pandemic has seen us reach new levels of fiscal and monetary stimulus, and this has helped accelerate the adoption of this brand new asset class by a broad cross-section of corporates. The extent of adoption is not something we could have anticipated at this point in the overall adoption curve. Many of you will have heard of Tesla adding Bitcoin to its balance sheet, but this was actually led by the CEO of MicroStrategy, who not only moved to a Bitcoin standard, but has also levered their balance sheet to buy Bitcoin with what they described as the melting USD. And this action has led several other corporates to put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. And I'm pleased to share that through our partnership with Treasury Management Indus Institute, the European industry body for corporate treasurers, we've now taken a leading role in Europe and Asia to help educate corporates on why Bitcoin can and should be used as a treasury asset. And despite Elon's recent comments around Bitcoin, 
the interest from corporates continues unabated. And these corporates are accompanied by some of the world's leading asset managers and investors, Mass Mutual, Tudor, Rafa, and Guggenheim. Paul Tudor Jones called Bitcoin the fastest horse in this latest bout of monetary inflation. And not surprisingly, the investors leading this charge are traditional bond investors who've recognized the destruction of yields brought around by this aggressive central bank action. On the payment processing side, we've seen everyone from PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, and most recently Venmo following Square's move into the crypto space to benefit from the huge growth opportunity. And the banks are coming too. US banks, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, and even the conservative Swiss UBS have stated that they're going to start offering crypto to their enormous asset base, base of wealth clients. <clears throat> Institutional adoption is coming fast. But what makes DigiNex unique when comparing us to the industry landscape in the US is that many of you will be familiar with is our focus on derivatives. Coinbase, for example, is a pure spot exchange. We do both derivatives and spot. We started to see the emergence of derivatives in crypto about four years ago. Today, derivative volumes are three times larger than any daily traded spot market in crypto. And while that sounds like enormous growth, it's only the beginning. In the traditional markets, similar instruments to crypto assets like FX and interest rate derivatives trade hundreds of times the underlying spot markets. The spot market today is illustrated in turquoise in the graphic with the dark blue representing the current derivative market. The potential for growth as crypto derivatives continue, their meteoric trajectory is represented by the pink circle. So we've built an exchange to the regulatory and governance standards required by institutions. And this ideally positions us to benefit from this adoption cycle as we continue to roll out the foundational pieces that form a very complete derivatives offering. So let's step back and take a good look at the full DigiNex offering. We are a lot more than just an exchange. We're an entire ecosystem that is designed to be fully accretive. Our exchange, Equos, operates under the Payment Services Act from the Singaporean Monetary Authority, one of the most credible regulators in Asia. Equos was one of the quickest exchanges to reach the $100 million mark in trading volume amongst the most well-known exchanges glo globally. Just last week, we were awarded an a ranking on Nomics, one of the leading independent crypto exchanges data providers. And this ranking by Nomics places Equos in the top 20 exchanges globally and top five in Asia for both transparency and volumes. And despite that, the exchange only launching publicly in July 2020. This is obviously a fact we are very proud of. And while it may say, sound like an odd thing to say, Equos volumes are genuine. <clears throat> and this is not the case with many exchanges in this space. We do not market make on our own exchange, which is an important requirement for professional traders who've suffered at the hands of pretty much every other exchange who trade with full visibility of the order book against their clients. The growth of the exchange will continue to be fueled by the further, further by the accretive nature of the ecosystem. Each business adds value and flow to the exchange. Digivolt is our highly secure digital asset custodian, and of course is a service provider to our exchange as well as to its other clients. Digivolt has been built to government standards of security. It's CREST certified, and Cyber Essentials Plus accredited for cybersecurity. And that Cyber Essentials Plus accreditation was designed by the Ministry of Defense in the UK. We were recently the first standalone digital custodian to be registered under the FCA's AMLD5 regulation and have specific crime insurance for assets under our custody. The team is led by ex-Ministry of Defense security specialist and ex-Royal Marine Commando Rob Cooper. Rob has hired and built an exemplary team and a product which continues to add features and functionality required by financial institutions. When you, when you have such a solid custodian offering 
And as balances build, we add other features like borrowing and lending, and you get to a point of stickiness around these assets. Bletchley Park is our asset manager. The fund is positioned to provide an on-ramp for institutional capital wanting exposure to this asset class. It's effectively a fund of hedge funds, which allows us to provide a portfolio approach to the very unique alpha that's available in crypto. On a 12 month rolling basis, the fund is estimated to have returned approximately 115%. And that's with a sharp ratio north of two. In addition, this market neutral approach has been extremely resilient during the market turbulence we've witnessed in May, generating an estimated growth gross performance decrease of approximately 3% while Bitcoin fell 35%. And this return profile is unique and it offers a compelling look at the alpha that the fund has been able to produce, holding on to gains even whilst Bitcoin was suffering. Investors are starting to pay attention with assets continuing to grow nicely. We're going to be launching a US domestic feeder for the fund this summer to meet the growing demand that we're seeing from onshore US investors. Our fund team have assessed 350 different managers and have finalized a pool of 25 investable managers. <clears throat> and this highlights something very important about the industry. There are many talented managers, but most of them are uninvestable. And this is where Equos and Digivolt come in. By running managed account functionality on Equos and Digivolt, Bletchley Park and other allocators can actually access far more funds without taking too much risk. This means investors can allocate to very talented managers, but don't actually need to touch their fund infrastructure. We have our first fund testing out the Equos managed account functionality at the moment. Next, Diginex Access, a multi-venue trading platform. And this is integrated with two of the world's largest trading technology firms, FIS and Itivity, who have integrated it into their execution management, order management, and portfolio management systems. We are the exclusive provider of crypto trading platforms for both of these firms. And this is important because the first step that many of these institutions make is to use technology that they already have on their desk, like Activities t bricks or FIS's Front Arena. Our product access allows them to trade on Coinbase, Kraken, and of course, Equos, along with another 20 or so exchanges. Activity have around 1,600 institutional clients, FIS closer to 5,000. The partnership with both these firms helps put Diginex firmly in play as one of the go-to institutional providers. Equos Capital is our capital markets business. This is focused on the long-term disruption that blockchain is going to bring to the capital markets. Today, it's a boutique advisory firm for securitization, and every paper security that we issue comes with the option to convert it into a digital security. In this way, we're planting seeds for what we see as the impending total disruption of capital markets, as we move away from paper to blockchain based digital securities. And while this business is small and relatively insignificant today, it is a long term play to position us at the center of the disruption of the $200 trillion capital markets opportunity. Boring and Lending will be uh, conducting its first institutional trades very soon with exchange integration coming next quarter. This is a very important piece of the overall ecosystem. And as it integrates fully into the platform, it will provide a service much like the investment bank prime brokerage model, where you have core collateral and you can borrow and lend and build derivative optimizing strategies around your base capital in a capital efficient manner. <clears throat> For retail, this is like having your own private bank account around digital assets, where borrowing and lending, portfolio overwriting and underwriting are essential tools for wealth protection and generation. This creates remarkable stickiness to the platform and increases longer term balances, which in turn become more accretive to the offering whilst increasing revenues. Finally, our investment products business. This business has the potential to really drive significant growth in the future 
with the ultimate goal of rolling out structured products. And when you have structured products that feed flow into the options products that we launch on Equos in the future, that's where you create real accretive flow and value to the exchange and eventually the custodian through a prime-like structure. The first step in this process is rolling out an exchange listed product, a Bitcoin tracker fund, which will be listed on the German exchange Zetra next month. <clears throat> As the investment products business evolves, we're going to be adding more products, including leveraged products, short products, and guaranteed yield notes based on the borrowing lending business before eventually rolling out structured products. Market makers for our first exchange listed products will source Bitcoin directly for Equos, which will be stored in the DigiVault custodian. This will guarantee that all Bitcoin in our tracker is not tainted and it will have been screened. It will also provide investors a differentiated product from the exchange traded products out there today. We are really excited that the enormous growth potential this business offers. So how do we make money? <clears throat> our exchange fees are competitive to attract professional and educated traders, but liquidation fees are a lot higher. And again, these big moves drive liquidations, meaning higher average fees on the platform on days with large fees, uh, with large moves, generally to the downside. Our extend, expected blended commission rate is between two to four basis points, and will continue to trend from the lower band to the upper band, as, uh, sorry, lower end of that range to the upper end of that range, as more and more institutions come on board and participate. As we expand our customer base, we anticipate that our commissions will continue to drive higher. The rest of the fees vary very much by business and are illustrative of the fact that our ecosystem is designed to deliver complementary yet diversified revenue streams from the very attractive commissions of complex, complex securitization at 7% through to Bletchley Park's standard 1.5 management and 15% performance fees. And then you have very sticky annuity business of custody and borrow and lend. <clears throat> This is the roadmap for the exchange in the coming two quarters. Equo is our own exchange token, which launched in early April and is one of the main contributing factors to the explosive volume growth on the platform. And this is really an example of the strong financial engineering capacity of the team. We've effectively designed a token with its strong incentives to drive volumes on the exchange. Along with the launch of Equo, this quarter will see the introduction of some of the foundational pieces of the derivative ecosystem. Isolated margin combined with cross collateralization will significantly improve the experience within levered and derivative products. Going to next quarter, we will launch managed accounts, which is really unique. Uh, no other exchange is offering this functionality for asset managers to raise capital and for all allocators to actually increase their capacity. We will also have a daily settlement for Bitcoin versus USD, which means that you have a settlement price for physically delivered options, which is expected to roll out later this year, along with the launch of our first version of the mobile app, which, which will expand uh, massively the number of on-ramps for retail customers. <clears throat> These are all really important milestones in the delivery of a full functioning derivatives market. The next two quarters of product delivery are gonna be game-changing for the company. On the subject of product delivery, the token does deserve a little more attention. We're the first NASDAQ listed company to list our own utility token, which was specifically designed to incentivize and drive volumes to the platform. The beauty of this technology is that it allows companies to provide future value to their clients in order to fuel early growth. The Equo token was never sold to investors or users. Instead, it can only be earned by users through trading on the platform or acquired on a platform from other users who are earning it. The token pays out daily staking rewards, which means it effectively pays yield every single day. And this incentivizes users to hold it rather than to sell it. So people don't wanna sell it, which has the effect of pushing the price up. And as the price goes up, so do volumes, which grows revenue. And as revenue grows to the point of profitability, the company is gonna implement a buyback program which will take the token even higher, which will drive volumes even higher. 
Equo's price has proved to be very resilient during periods of weak cryptocurrency prices as well. So the token helps an early stage exchange like Equos drives volume, drive volumes higher and higher and will allow us to rapidly catch up with some of our incumbent competitors. We are ideally positioned to benefit from this adoption cycle as we accelerate the rollout of our product roadmap and grow our full functioning derivative markets out to scale, we expect to see volumes continue their very explosive growth. As you can see from this growth, derivative volumes started in January with the launch of Perpetuals and now make up approximately 50% of our volumes on an average basis. And since April and the launch of the token, volumes have legged higher and higher. As discussed, that incentive structure should continue to press volumes even higher. And as volumes grow, we become more attractive as a venue for larger liquidity players and the flywheel becomes self-perpetuating. Finally, I often get asked by investors, how do I get access to this asset class? And for investors in our own stock, this shows actually the full value of the ecosystem play. The most direct option obviously is investing into the asset class, is into the asset itself. We facilitate this through our exchange and our OTC business combined with our custodian. Investors who want more stable, reliable and less extreme returns can invest in incredible, incredible asset management products. And as highlighted before, our fund is a key offering in that space that allows investors to benefit from the unique alpha available in crypto. And for those who, who want direct exposure but can't touch the asset directly, they can invest in a listed product, a little like the Bitcoin Tracker, our first exchange listed product on Zetra, the German exchange that we'll be launching very, very soon. Mining is the one area that we're not involved with. However, this is a highly capital intensive business and the only the most efficient miners will consistently do well. There are focused organizations listed on NASDAQ that can provide this exposure. But perhaps the best way to play the space is directly via the ecosystem that makes money, whether the price goes up or down as a picks and shovels play. We offer the full remit of exposure to digital assets. Diginex is the pure play digital asset ecosystem. And I thank you for listening.